Well, I'm so excited to talk to you guys because I grew up on Jars of Clay and I've never gotten to talk to you guys. Can you believe that? I am sorry that that didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but we're making it happen now, and what's extra exciting is we're talking about The Chosen, because you guys created the incredible music for The Chosen. So talk about how you got involved with this incredible project. Hmm. Well, you know, it, it started uh, with Dallas Jenkins, as it seems to in almost all areas of The Chosen, uh, mm -hmm. minus the, the source material. But um, <laughs> uh, I've known Dallas for a long time, and he and I had collaborated on a movie um, called Hometown Legend. That was one of his first films that he ever really worked on. And, um, and it was a really interesting experience back then um, because he was making a Christian kind of high school football movie. Like I think most Christian filmmakers have to do at least <laughs> one of those. It's a rite of passage. Um, and... And I kept trying to push him away from the like the the Christian music um, space for f music in the show, um, and so I was introducing him to a lot of like um, blues music and artists from Mississippi and Alabama, where he was shooting the film, and um, and it was just a really great experience. And then we kind of tucked that away. That was in like two thousand. And then um, he just he called me up and said, "Hey, I'm working on this project. It's this. It's a story about Jesus, and um, and I would like for you to be in and do the music for it." And I said, "I don't. I don't think so, Dallas. I don't think I really want to do a show about Jesus because I don't know that I've ever seen one done well." Um, and so I said, "I just. I don't think I want to connect myself to to that right now." And um, he said, "Okay, but." just give me some time to describe this. And he took about a week and called me back and just told me more about the show and what he was hoping to do and accomplish with it. And, and I was like, okay, I, this makes a little more sense to me. I think I can, I can do that. So I said, sure, let's just see what happens. And then I said, but, uh, but I'd like to have a, a co collaborator in this if I could. And I was like, all right. And he suggested a few people. And I said, no, I've got a guy who um, I've worked with before, I've toured with, and I think he'd be great. And it was Matt Nelson. And uh, so I texted Matt and just said, hey, would you, would you be up for doing a Jesus project? <laughs> and, and he said yes. So, yeah. Hmm. What did you think when you heard Jesus project? Did you think the same thing? Like, I've never seen that done well. Mostly, yeah. yeah. But um, but I also thought if because um, I because I trust Dan's opinions on m most creative things. I thought, well, if Dan if Dan can if this is a thing that Dan can stomach, then I can probably do it too. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I know we were about we were probably about on the same page with our taste. So mm -hmm. yeah. Dan, I'm curious, why were you trying to push Dallas away from the Christian music space? Oh, uh, for that, it was just more a matter of authenticity. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, at that time in the year 2000, in the year 2000, um, the music that was happening in, in the Christian space was, um, you know, it, it, it didn't fit the film. Um, he needed music that was more connected to the Delta Blues and more connected to, like there's a record label out of Mississippi called Fat Possum Records. And, um, and our, you know, groups like the Rolling Stones who are, um, have a lot of really great blues elements in their music. I really wanted to push that angle for him in that film. And you just couldn't really find that in the Christian music space. And I just felt like he wants to tell a good story that has universal value um, there's no reason to circle the wagons and like keep it only in the context of the Christian space. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Dallas and I have always had conversations like that about like how do we how do we tell stories? How do we use creative expression uh, that has the, this Christian worldview, but but doesn't make it exclusive, mm -hmm. uh, and then doesn't also have to apologize um, mm -hmm. when it's not as good as other things that are out there. 
because um, that was all also a big problem, as most of us know that have worked in the Christian space, is that, you know, they've, for a host of different reasons, the actual output of creative projects has never really been quite as on par with what is happening in other creative conversations. So we always wanted to aspire to do something better uh, mm -hmm. and to feel like the work we were doing was not something that needed to be apologized for, but was actually, if, if not best, uh, at least better than what was going on at that point. Have you been encouraged by the changes and the progress that you've seen in that space? Because you've been in CCM for a long time, so you've kind of seen the ebb and flow of Christian music and Christian entertainment in general. Yeah. I'm excited about what's happening in the, in the, uh, I don't, really like the label faith-based, but it's a functional label, but the faith-based media world, and specifically with film and television, um, I think is really starting to change. Because I think, I think there are, um, I think there are a handful of filmmakers, and I think that, um, I think The Chosen, um, while it's not, while it probably hasn't started this thing, it seems like it's been a particular kind of catalyst for encouraging um, younger filmmakers who want to make things that honor and talk about faith in different contexts, but don't want to do it in this old, cheesy, poorly produced fashion as it's been done. And um, so it's now, I think, I think it's a really exciting time for faith-based media, particularly film and television. Yeah. So it's, I think it's getting ready to explode. I think we're kind of like at the beginning of a movement. Yeah. Let that be your warning. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, though. Yeah. Well, why do you think The Chosen? It has universal appeal. You talked about that. I mean, it's not just Christian audiences. It's mainstream audiences. People that don't know Christ at all are loving this show. Mm -hmm. What is driving this? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think it's hard to find somebody who doesn't know Christ at all. Um, but I think they know a version of religion or a version of faith. Um, I think the stories we tell about Jesus are not very compelling. Um, yeah. And, and so... I think when they see this version of Jesus portrayed, I think it really does. It, it matters that he's merciful, that he's he's extending a lot of grace. Um, he has his own flaws in a human way. Like he's very relatable and um, and gracious. And I think people need to see that mm -hmm. that side of Jesus because we've a lot of us have been force fed. Um, you know, a, a version of Jesus that only cares about our behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and every episode, the story pushes back on that. You know, every episode, it tries to turn the table on, oh, your behavior is not actually what matters. It is, it is the inner workings of your heart and your soul that will matter. Um, and he keeps kind of pushing that, you know, there's no shame, there's no condemnation, there's those kinds of ideas that we, we've gotten out of the habit of talking about in the church at large. I think it's, if, if people have a, an experience in the church, most often it's something that is focused on their behavior and not on their, their heart and their soul and their actual intrinsic value. And so I think this Jesus portrays that in a way that, that gives people something to connect with. Mm -hmm. I think it honors them um, because Jesus himself um, sort of upended um, the practice of Judaism. I mean, the whole, I think that Judaism had become an institution and a machine and had very particular workings and mm -hmm. had become in a lot of ways disconnected mm -hmm. from its source. And um, so when Jesus upended all of that stuff, um, he he did it in a way that honored the source, but um, but it was all this extra institutional stuff that sort of 
um, kept people trapped from experiencing direct intimacy with God. Mm. And, um, and I think that the show is really trying to do the same thing. Mm. The show is injecting imagination. Jesus injected imagination and his stories into the people who heard them about mm. reimagining what it's like to directly experience the divine and directly experience one another. Yeah. And I think the show is I think the show is doing that. It's injecting some imagination into um, into all of these stories that if if we've grown up as Christians that I've grown up all my life knowing these stories and somehow watching the chosen is um, almost like I've never I've never heard this story before. Mm-hmm. And the way the characters are portrayed, Matthew um, being portrayed as on the spectrum in some way. And um, there's just all this beautiful creativity that mm-hmm. doesn't take, um, it's, it doesn't matter whether or not it's, whether or not it's factually accurate that Matthew was on the spectrum or not, or whatever. It's plausible. But seeing Matthew portrayed that way is, um, has brought so much beauty into mm-hmm. um, so many people who responded to um, Matthew's character in particular, right. but a lot of the others as well. Yeah. How have your own spiritual journeys been impacted by working so closely um, on this show? Yeah, that's a it's a great question. Um, the the timing of everything has actually been really interesting. Um, the show, being able to work on the show in these last couple of years, where you know everything seems to be in transition and upheaval total chaos, you know, whether it's COVID or um, <laughs> just relationships in general and stuff. And, and it's been a hard, it's a hard, been a hard couple years. Um, and the gift is we would show up and we would sit next to each other in the studio and we'd talk about life and, and then we'd experience this, this Jesus in a way that, that was able to speak to our own pain or my pain, pain you know, and and I'm trying to create the soundtrack to that. It just, it, it gave it so much more of an emotional uh, weight for what we were doing and, and really did impact my own, um, yeah, just my own sense of, of the biblical story. And it, and it helps me kind of get back to, to paying a lot more attention to Jesus and, and a lot less to the institution uh, of whether it's, you know, just religion in general or you know that's that's the piece like Matt said of there's the disconnect of um, when an institution disconnects from its source Hmm. and and starts believing things that aren't actually part of it in order to just sustain itself Um, I feel like you know the, the church has done a lot of that we've We've given value to things that don't need to have value. We've paid attention to behavior when we should be paying attention to the soul. Um, and I need to hear that. I need to be reminded of that. And and so that's where it's hit me. Yeah, it's probably hit me in similar ways. Um, I, I think it's forced me to um, consider... Um, to consider what I really think and believe about some of these... Um, about some of these stories and some of these characters. Um, so it's uh, when, when all of a sudden we're scoring, um, it was a particular episode that we were, um, that we were getting ready to score. Oh, you know what it was? It was, um, uh, it was the Beatitudes. Oh, yeah. And we were trying to figure out how to score this, how to underscore this moment where, Jesus and Matthew are basically going through the Beatitudes. Yeah. And and it really made me reevaluate. Um, it's all just context because the context in which I've heard a lot of these stories has been in Sunday school or um, it's been at a Bible study or it's been at some... Um, something that I have some other attachment to rather than just being this story by itself. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's caused me to re-examine those stories in a way that's independent from all these weird other unnecessary attachments that 
the story has. Um, so it's uh, it's we get together in a room and sit for an hour, and it's just the two of us most yeah. days, and um, and talk about what these things are saying to us, um, and sort of reflect on their importance right now today, not. Not their importance on what was what I learned in Sunday school or what I learned in some Bible study, but what do they what do they really mean to me? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When when nobody's looking and nobody cares what they mean to me, what do they what do I value about them? And then how do I um, and then how do we turn that into how do we turn that into a musical score? Right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is. Mm-hmm. Can be really hard. <laughs> well, fantastic. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for chatting Thank with you. me. Thank you. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. Thanks for having us.